let's talk about heavy bullets for big game. Guy Miner here from UltimateReloader.com. In this video, today we're going to be talking about why heavy bullets. We're going to talk about the bullets and about our loads, specifically 30 caliber loads. 308, 30 6 and the big 300 PRC. We're going to mention the rifles briefly and show you how you can get more info on the rifles. We're going to do a ballistics comparison. We're going to have some chronograph data, trajectory out to a thousand yards, gel block results, and we're going to come to some conclusions. So one of America's most popular cartridge calibers is the 30 caliber. Has been for a long time, since the 1890s. 30-40 Krag, 30-03. 30-06, and then all the 300 magnums and everything else that fell in there, along with things like the 3030, for instance. 30 caliber has been around a long time. Americans love it, and it's been successful all over the world. We're going to talk about why heavy bullets are good for a couple of applications. One, their traditional role as being excellent for taking big game, and the other, with today's heavy bullets, long streamlined high BC bullets, why they're good for long range. We're also going to talk a little bit about the rifles that can use these and whether or not your rifle can handle all these different loads and, and all these cartridges. And by the way, 300 Win Mag guys, whatever time we're talking 300 PRC, it really applies to your stuff too because the ballistics on the two are so close. Trajectories and, and energy and all that. Um, as you can see, I have turned to heavy bullets a few times when I went after something that was especially big. This is not a new idea. We've got a Old picture here of Ernest Hemingway with his Cape Buffalo and his 30 6 Not supposed to do that anymore, but he could do it back then legally, and apparently it worked. So 30 6 and big game go way, way, way back. What you need to know though is that the 220 grain 30 caliber bullet way predates the 30 6 It was first used with the 3040 Krag, as far as I know. If there was something earlier than that, I don't know about it. Then when the 3040 Krag from the 1890s was replaced with a 30-03 Springfield, they also used the 220 grain bullet. That wasn't producing the results that they wanted to. They wanted to compete with the 7mm Mauser cartridge and things like that. So they lightened up the bullets and the 30-06 was born. But the 220 grain bullet never went away. It's been available for hand loaders, it's been available in factory ammunition, and it still is. So the long, long history of 220 grain bullets. What's happened in recent years, much more recently, is the advent of some very high BC bullets from people like Hornady who've come up with some great long range hunting bullets. Probably the most common big game, I'm talking bigger than deer, everybody hunts deer. Bigger than deer, probably the most common in North America for us is our elk. And particularly if you're looking for one of those big old trophy bulls, I had the good fortune to take one quite a few years ago, about 20 years ago, I took one in the Wind River Mountains of Wyoming. Wonderful hunt, and I too switched to heavy bullets for that because I was going with a really seasoned elk hunter, and he cautioned me that maximum penetration was very, very important. So I went with a heavy for caliber bullet and took my elk cleanly with one shot. That made me feel real good about that. The old bulls are a whole different, whole different critter than what I've been hunting lately, which is cow elk and some spikes and things like that. Those are smaller, younger animals. Well, some of the cows aren't young, but you're talking a 400 pound animal, maybe 500, whereas the big bulls, 700, 800 pounds. If you get into the Roosevelt bulls, you can go over 1,000 pounds. Um, pretty, ama pretty amazing the size of them. It's not just the sheer weight. They have this incredible strength. They have grown, they have huge muscles, a very thick hide. You find that out when you go to skin them, that their hides get, seem to get thicker. I have read that their bones are extremely dense, some of the densest of any animal in North America. And of course, they're very heavily muscled. And that muscle can actually turn into some really, really good meat too. But that's asking a lot of a bullet to penetrate through the hide, the muscle, the big bone, and get into the vitals and make that kill. 
Today we're going to talk about two bullets in particular, very different bullets, and one is the 220 grain round nose soft point Hornady. It's an interlock bullet. It's been around for many years. I don't remember a time when it didn't exist. I'll have to ask Hornady someday when they came out with that. But it's been a long time and it is still readily available. In fact, I bought this box this year. And then we're going to contrast that with one of their much newer bullets, the 212 grain ELDX, a hunting bullet. ELDM match, ELDX, expanding for hunting bullets. These two bullets couldn't be a lot more different. They are both over 200 grains and they are both 30 caliber and that ends the similarities. All right, there's basically not a lot more. The big, big change is the external shape and on the uh, 220 grain round nose soft point you can see that blunt rounded tip and it's a flat base and that bullet was not intended for long range applications. That is a wonderful bullet up closer. It's pretty famous in uh, hunting circles. It's done a pretty good job for many many hunters. Um, it's intended for large game and if you look at Hornady's application chart they also show it's applicable for dangerous game. That's interesting. There's not a lot of 30 caliber bullets that are looked at as dangerous game capable, but this one is. Go over to the 212 ELDX. My goodness, my goodness. Let's compare the BCs. The 220 grainer has a .300 G1 BC. They don't even bother with a G7 BC for it. It doesn't fit that mold. The 212, .663. That is a world of difference between the two, and it shows up especially on our trajectory charts and graphs. Thing that I really appreciate about Hornady keeping the 212 suitable for the normal 1 in 10 twist barrel that is found on most 30 6s some 308s, and until recently, pretty much all the 300 magnums, all the various types of magnums, there were some that weren't made in a 1 to 10, but most of them have been over the years. And that's nice, we don't have to go to a special fast twist barrel. You can load these bullets for your rifle. Now, they don't work real well, I tried, out of my, uh, my 1 in 12 twist 308, so we didn't use that for this one, okay? We used a shorter, faster twist 308. Our loads, we have looking at six different loads, three cartridges, two bullets, three kinds of powder. 220 grain round nose soft point, 212 grain ELDX. Uh, let's start out with our 308 Winchester. We did that with our rifle that we have nicknamed Shorty. It has a 16 and a quarter inch barrel with a fast twist barrel. And we used Varget for that. It's probably my all time favorite powder for the 308 Winchester. It's a 220 grain round nose soft point, 40.1 grains of Varget. And out of a little 16 inch barrel, we saw 2200 feet per second, 2208. Uh, that's not very fast. On the other hand, it's faster than, say, my 3030 does with a 170 grain bullet. So there is that. Got to think about things in perspective here. The 212 ELDX, very interesting 308 load. We bumped up the Varget a little bit, 42.2 grains, saw 2400, so we picked up 200 feet per second uh, out of that. And, and here's uh, the kicker though, if you look in the Hornady manual, they list the overall length that they want you to load this to at three inches. That won't fit in very many normal 308 magazines. Sure doesn't fit in my rifle, doesn't fit in the magazine we've got for Shorty. However, you can single load it, or at least we could. We could single load it and work that way. But it's an interesting thing. It's something you need to know about before you go buy a box of these to try in your 308. And then you find out that Hornady wants you to load them longer and uh, they won't work. Okay, so don't do that. Do your homework first. Take a look at it and see if you can deal with a three inch long 308. Went to, uh, my other favorite, the good old 30 6 and I'm going to say old, we, um, we took my old Springfield Sporter out that's been in the family longer than I have. And it's a 22 inch barrel, it's a very, very nice old Sporter. Old school gunsmithing work on that. And has a 1 in 10 twist, like almost all 30 6s have had. 
And I went to a powder that we have not used before here on the channel, at least I don't think we have. Uh, it's the Superformance. And it is very, very good in some applications. And taking a look at both at the available reloading data and both these bullets, I said, you know what? That's got some strong potential there for some good velocity. So I loaded up the 220 grain round nose bullets and 55.6 grains of super performance, 2440 feet per second out of the 22 inch barrel dot six. Pretty good. A lot of thump. If you're used to shooting 150s at normal velocity out of your 30-06, um, hang on to your 30-06 after you load these up. It's got a, a little bit more recoil. It'll, it'll get your attention. The uh, 212 ELDX, also super performance, 56.3 grains. Make sure that you double check all that. Don't just take my word for it. Double check in the manuals. 2,590 feet per second. Now, I've got another 30 out 6 that I hunt with a lot that has a 24 inch barrel, so I know I can get well over 2,600 feet per second out of that load and that rifle. That's something I'm real interested in. I actually got encouraged to do this by a buddy of mine who's a big time elk hunter, and he has been using his 30 out 6 lately with the 212, so I asked him about it. And I said, Hey, Scotty, what do you think about this? And he says, Do it. And he sent me some of his uh, stats, what he'd done with his rifles. And sure enough, he was getting good velocity and doing great things on elk with it. Well, you can't just stop with the 30 out 6. You got to move up into the magnums too, especially if we're talking big game or long ranges. So we chose the 300 PRC. Gavin built that rifle here a while back, and we've had some excellent success with it. It has a 26 inch barrel, has a little faster twist, which is nice because sometimes we've shot some real heavy bullets out of it. Again, again, the 220 grain round nose soft point. We use Stable HG. That's a pretty new powder from Hodgden. It has some interesting advantages, and it's right up there with some of the other real slow burning powders intended for magnum loads. Uh, I went with 80.2 grains, and taking right out of the manual, 2,849 feet per second. Then went with the ELDX. That's available in the factory load. That is 81.1 grains of stay ball and almost 2,900 feet per second. Now, you 300 Winchester guys are gonna be able to get almost exactly the same velocities with your hand loads. The three rifles that we used, you've seen uh, two of these before, uh, mostly shorty, because we got all enthused about that this last year or so. And uh, it's a, a custom built rifle that Gavin did on a bat action. It's got a 16 and a quarter inch barrel. It's got a foundation uh, stock on it that's been really comfortable for me to shoot. Um, I just plain like it. It's uh, not light, but it's real handy, very good with or without a suppressor. Uh, I found it very easy to shoot. I was I had already shot the 30 out 6 with these heavy bullets, and I wasn't too sure about the 308 with them, and it was it was a piece of cake. It handled them just fine. The old 30 out 6 Springfield we have not had here on the show before. That was actually uh, customized or sporterized by my grandfather for dad while he was still in the Navy after World War II. So this thing's been around since the 40s, and of course the original action and barrel were built before that. So it's been around a long time. Dad didn't use it all that much. Uh, I've got it now, and it is, it's quite a rifle. I look forward to doing some more hunting with it. It's got a 22 inch barrel, and it is uh, quite a bit different from the as issued Springfield. I also have one of those. Gavin's 300 PRC, long barrel, heavy rifle, made for long range precision shooting, and it will do it. Um, I don't really like heavy, heavy rifles, mostly because my emphasis these days is all on hunting. This one is heavy, and it's actually kind of nice in a 300 Magnum type rifle to have some extra weight there to keep the recoil down, keep the accuracy up and the recoil down. So we'll have links in this to get to all information on, especially on Shorty and on the 300 PRC. We haven't done anything really with the old Springfield. Okay, we've taken a look at our loads, and what we're going to do now is see what happens to those loads down range. We'll start with the 308. We're going to go with the shortest, weakest one of the, all these. 308. Not that the 308's weak. I didn't say that. It's just the least powerful of these three cartridges. So let's take a look at some of these trajectory charts and graphs coming up for all three cartridges and both bullets. We're going to start with the 308 Winchester 
and the 212 grain ELDX bullet, which has a crazy high BC of 0.663. And let's take a look and see what that BC does for us. Now, start out at 2,400 feet per second. At 100 yards, it's doing 2,274. You can see already it's not slowing down very much. 200 yards, 2,152 feet per second. And 300 yards, it's still doing over 2,000 feet per second. Now, you're thinking, well, you know, 300 Magnum guys saying, what is that? That's, that's like, that doesn't matter. Yeah, it actually does matter. If you want to use your 308 with a heavy bullet, it will do it. And this, uh, this ELDX does a really fine job of it. Remember, though, 3-inch long cartridge, not 2.8. So you have some trouble in some of the actions. We don't get down to 1,900 feet per second until 400 yards 1,800 feet per second at 500, and just barely over 1,700 at 600 yards. Now keep that in mind. This thing is still doing 1,700 feet per second at 600 yards, and somebody's going to be saying, well, what about expansion out there? Oh, we get into that with the gel blocks. Believe me, it expands real nice, real nice, even slower than that. Contrast that with the good old 220 grain round nose soft point. Why might you want that from your 308 for hunting? I don't know, think about wild boar, think about black bear in thick cover, maybe maybe big, big bucks in the snow and in the, in the heavy woods, something like that. Yeah, if you're only going to be shooting a relatively modest distance, why not? Why not? And people have pushed the 308 all the way up to include elk, moose, and even the great big grizzlies. So it can do the job. There's no doubt about that in my mind. However, Big old blunt bullet slows down much, much faster. We start at 2200, which was what we could get out of it. Slows down by 100 yards, down to 1940. 1700 feet per second at 200 yards, whereas the ELDX had that at 600 yards. Whoa, what a difference, okay? So, big, heavy, slow bullet, big, heavy, much faster bullet. It's not that it started out all that much faster, it just hangs on to that velocity really, really well. More than just the speed. We'll talk about the trajectory a little bit, we'll get into that some more. And also, always think about wind drift. Wind is a real big thing in some places, especially hunting out west. I had to deal with a lot of wind when I made my last shot on my elk in January, 405 yards in a stiff crosswind with my 30-06 and a lighter ELDX bullet, a 178. So, and it worked, it worked fine. So, wind is a big deal. Talk about our wind drift, 10 mile an hour wind is what I used figuring this out. At 300 yards, which is pretty normal shot out west a lot of times, the 212 has only drifted 5.8 inches. The 220, almost 16 inches of wind drift. That's a big difference and enough to cause a really bad hit on an animal, maybe a miss. So think about that. There are a lot of advantages to this 212 ELDX for the extended type ranges. Here we have a graph. Thank you, Gavin. He came up with these for me. And uh, they're, they're pretty cool. They have slightly different drop figures than the chart that I came up with. I used the uh, Hornady's standard calculator and that came out with all the numbers on the chart. There's, the graph came up with a little bit different but not much, not enough to really matter. What it does show me is that it's real important for the rifleman, for the hunter, to go out and establish the drop charts for their own individual rifle. Sometimes things vary a bit. So these are only a couple inches different. And as you can see, we wanted to take a look and see what was happening all the way out at 600 yards. Um, the 308 bullet with the ELDX has only dropped only 111 inches. Yeah, okay, think about that. I used to shoot a lot of 600 yard matches and they are, they're dropping like a rock out there. But worse rock, 220 grain round nose soft point. 200 inches of drop, almost double. That's amazing. Push it on out to a thousand. Now this is not fair to the 220 grain round nose soft point. Nobody ever intended that bullet to be used at a thousand yards. And look at those figures. 412 inches of drop for the streamlined ELDX 
and almost 900 inches of drop at 1,000 yards for the 220 round nose. That's, uh, that's kind of crazy. That's a lot to compensate for. Um, you'd be dialing some elevation on that scope to make that happen. Okay, we're going to turn to my favorite all-round hunting cartridge, the .30-06. Sorry, that thing and I, we just, we get along. We do all kinds of hunting together. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's just, it's a peach. It's easy to reload, and it's easy to shoot, and it does big things out there in the hunting field. So, I like it a lot. Now, I am real interested. I've shot the 220-grain round nose bullets from it before and had them work really, really well. I was curious about this 212 ELDX that my friend Scotty has done so well with. And also, I like the ELDX performance that I got back in January when I was elk hunting. It did a good job, but this is just more ELDX than that 178 was. So 2,590 feet per second out of a 22-inch barrel. Okay, that's moving pretty good for the 212. Drop it on down there, 2459, 2331, 2207 at 300 yards. And get out to 400 yards, we're down to about 2087 feet per second. 500 yards, 1971 feet per second. And 600, we're down to uh, 1859 feet per second. Easily still expanding at that speed. Honestly, with the uh, small amount of drop and wind drift that this bullet has, and from Scotty's glowing description of how well it did on elk for him, and from what we saw later in the test with the ballistics gel, I'm pretty enthused about this, and I may even switch to that as my standard 30-06 hunting bullet load, at least for a season or two. See how that works out for me. Um, but you can't ignore the old 220. It has done so many things. I mean, if Hemingway used it, Roosevelt used it, famous hunters from the past to drop all kinds of big game. There's even a story out there about Hemingway dropping a rhino with his 30 6 and 220 grain bullet. I think that was a full metal jacket bullet though. Uh, 2440 feet per second it starts out with. It gives you that good little thump in the shoulder when it goes off too. 2164 at 100 yards. 1907 at 200 yards. That is again kind of like we saw in the 308. It's about 200 yards is very similar to our 600 yard figure with the high BC 212 grain bullet. And we won't even get into how much it's slowing down out there at 600. That's 1100 feet per second. That's too slow for me. If we take a look at the wind drift, let's go 300 yards. 13.7 inches of wind drift with the big round nose 220. Only five inches of wind drift for the 212. Five inches is not bad. That works out really well for me. And there's also times you gotta think about it, well, what at higher, higher and higher um, wind speeds. You can actually look that up in your ballistics calculator from Hornady or quite a few other programs. You can even put it on your phone, an app, and find out what that's gonna be. Because sometimes the wind is just plain howling out here. Take a look at our, at our graph here. And again, kind of echoing what happened with the 308. The ELDX is, of course, dropping a lot less. 93 inches at uh, 600 yards versus 160 inches at 600 yards for the round nose soft point. That's a lot of difference. If we take that on out to 1,000, 346.9 inches, all right, for the good uh, ELDX there, and 742 inches of drop for the big 220 round nose soft point. Again, it was never meant for a thousand yard shooting. Okay, if you're gonna talk 30 caliber hunting, you gotta talk the 300 Magnum class. And I'm kinda lumping them all in together. Yes, we use the PRC for our example, but the 300 Win Mag has roughly the same ballistics, can be loaded to about the same velocities. The 300 Weatherby's a little hotter. Uh, the old 300 H&H isn't too far behind. 300 Wisdom is a little bit farther behind, kind of halfway in between there, between the 30-06 and the 300 Win Mag. Uh, and some loadings, other loadings, it's right there with the Win Mag. I've messed around with many of these cartridges over the years, the 300 Magnums, and I like them. They do exactly what they're supposed to do, and they can be effective up close, up close and personal there, for those short range situations on really big game, or you can stretch the range way out there. They will do it. If you're up to it, they're up to it. I'm going to start out with that 212 again. 
almost 2,900 feet per second muzzle velocity. Couple that kind of muzzle velocity with the .663 G1BC, and you are talking some serious horsepower and downrange horsepower. That load produces just shy of 4,000 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. I'm not a big believer in you need X amount of foot-pounds of energy to kill this size of animal or that size of animal. No, I'm more in the camp of put a good bullet where it needs to be and you're going to fill your tag. But it's an indicator of the power level. And when you're talking almost 4,000 foot foot pounds of energy there at the muzzle, you're talking about a pretty serious cartridge. That is, that is knocking on the door of the same kind of power level that I'm seeing out of my 375 H and H. Different ways of getting there. This is emphasizing the velocity. Move a heavy bullet fast, you get power. The thing that's nice about the ELDX and other really high BC bullets is they don't shed their velocity nearly as rapidly. So we're looking out there, some great velocities. Let's go on down to 300 yards. That's a good one to take a look at. 2,489 feet per second still at 300 yards. That's more than the 308 had at the muzzle. That's, that's the difference right there. That's why some guys are still very enthused about hunting with their Magnum rifles, because they make a lot of velocity, a lot of power, and they get the job done. Uh, at 300 yards, its wind drift is only 4.4 inches. You move that high BC bullet faster, you get less wind drift and less drop, both of which helps the hunter make those good hits out in the field. 300 yards with the 220 is a whole different story. Uh, we start out the uh, 220 at a pretty impressive 2,850 feet per second. Oh yeah, that's gonna thump, okay? And we get out to 300, we are down to 2,000 feet per second. So it is slowing down big time, it's dropping much more, and it is drifting in the wind a lot more. It's got 10.8 inches of wind drift versus the 4.4 we had with the ELDX. Again, to be fair to the good old 220, it was never intended for long range shooting. One thing to note before we move on from that is that the 300 PRC at 600 yards has got that ELDX moving at 2,115 feet per second which is about the same velocity my 3030 Winchester has with a 170 grain bullet at the muzzle. Wow, huge difference. The big magnums still have a reason for existing. 300 PRC, 212, drops uh, 74.9 inches at 600 yards. And the 220 round nose, 106. Uh, not as bad as we've seen in some of the other examples, and that's because we start out at quite a bit heavier or higher velocity. Take it on out to 1,000, and this is where your 300 PRC with a real long heavy bullet like this, high BC bullet, is really shining. 278 inches of drop out there at 1,000, 520 for the round nose soft point 220. Big difference, yep. Ooh, next we're going to move on in and take a look at our ballistics gel. Okay, to do our ballistics gel test, we use the clear ballistics gel blocks again. Great product, we enjoy using them. It's a bit of a, bit of a setup to make that happen, but we go ahead and we like doing it, and uh, it's, it's kind of a lot of fun. So what I wanted to do this time, in the past we've mostly shot our ballistics gel tests at maximum warp factor four velocity out of our different rifles. And some of the comments we've got from viewers is, hey, why don't you give us the impact at a much reduced velocity so we can see what the bullet will perform like out there at longer ranges. And I said, yeah, okay, we can do that. And especially with the, uh, with the using the 308, because we kept the same two bullets, 220 and the 212, and we loaded them down. Now, Hornady obligingly has data in there for their 212 ELDX and their 220 grain round nose for the uh, 308 Winchester, and I loaded those with enough Varget to get us about 2,000 feet per second from a 24-inch barrel. And then we shot them out of a 16-inch barrel, and I got some real low velocities, and it was real interesting seeing that both bullets performed well.
You can take a look at our videos there that shows the impact of both the 212 and the 220. They impacted those gel blocks hard. They had good penetration and good expansion on both of them. Let's talk about the 212 first. 1,543 feet per second. When I saw that, I was like, hmm, I wonder if that's even going to expand. Oh yeah, it expanded just fine. Also, it penetrated 23 and a half inches into the gel blocks, which is pretty darn good. That's enough for most big game. Uh, retained 193.7 grains of bullet weight. That surprised me and impressed me. Honestly, my old traditional brain, I thought the 220 round nose soft point was going to retain its weight better and penetrate a lot better than the ELDX. Nope, that's not what, uh, not what we saw. It expanded to 0.633 inch diameter. That's double diameter. That worked out really good. Note that this velocity of 1,543 feet per second from the muzzle is about the same velocity as the 308 with this bullet has at over 700 yards. Now I'm not advocating you go out there and say, hey, you know, guy said I can take this bullet and shoot my elk at 700 yards. No, I didn't say that. I said in our gel blocks at this velocity, it performed really well. And we can extrapolate from that on what would happen with hide and hair and muscle and bone and all that sort of stuff, okay? So me, I'll keep my shot shorter. Looked at the 220 grain round nose soft point next and it hit those blocks hard. Absolutely no doubt about that. You can see that in the video. 1,578 feet per second was our muzzle velocity and we were only 10 yards from the block. So that's still basically the impact velocity too. A little bit more penetration, one more inch of penetration, 20, 24 and a half inches. So both of them got right around two feet of penetration. 172 grains, which is, is fine, but the lighter 212 retained more Wait, interesting. Uh, also had 0.692 inch diameter, so it actually opened up a little wider. Kind of a raggedy looking mushroom on there, but it worked out really, really well. So this is indicative of the downrange performance at various velocities and various distances from all these cartridges. If they'll expand down there at 1,500 and some odd feet per second, I consider that pretty darn impressive. Taking a look at these and uh, weighing them out and comparing them to the unfired versions, uh, you can see they deformed a lot. What really impressed me with the 212 ELDX is how long that shank is that's still left and what a nice mushroom capped it there. Um, it's actually a heck, of a heck of a good performance from the hunting bullet there. And I'm not taking anything away from the 220 round nose soft point. If you want to use that bullet up close, I think it'll do a darn fine job for you. So. Let's get some conclusions here. First, we have talked through all this and ballistic coefficient, BC, really matters. Especially if you're trying to push the range beyond two or 300 yards. The farther you push it, the more it matters. I would say after 100 years of heavy bullets in the 30 caliber, that yeah, they're here to stay. Well, I think we're going to have heavy bullets in the 30 caliber for a long, long time to come. And not just for one application, not just for heavy game like a buffalo or a big bull elk or a grizzly bear or something like that. No, not just for that, but also for extended distance shooting. Say so you want to go ahead and, and take your shot out there at four or five hundred yards. Well, get a really good shooting rifle, okay? Make really good hand loads, practice with it a lot and choose one of these high BC bullets such as the ELDX. These heavy 30 cal bullets have proven themselves capable of handling pretty much every type of game around the world at one point or another. Now, that being said, back in the old days when they used the 30-06 and, and the 300 H&H for some of the heavy game in Africa like rhino, um, elephant even, back then they also loaded some 220 grained round nose with a heavy full metal jacket. Uh, some of those bullets had steel jackets that had a copper coating on them. Those, uh, I don't know if anybody still makes those or not. At any rate, I don't really have any use for those, but I do have a use for 220 grain soft points and the 212 grain ELDX. So what I want to know 
is are you using heavy for caliber hunting bullets? Are you using them in a 30 caliber or something else like maybe a seven millimeter? And what are you using them for? What kind of game? What ranges are you looking at shooting with them? And uh, just tell us how that works out. Drop a comment and we'll have a discussion. And that wraps us up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you want to learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're going to want to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.